Private Prison Trend by Tashauna Holiday. Private Prisons, an introduction. With less than 5% of the world's population, but nearly 25% of its incarcerated population, the United States imprisons more people than any other nation in the world, largely due to the war on drugs. Misguided drug laws and harsh sentencing requirements have produced profoundly unequal outcomes for people of color. Although rates of drug use and sales are similar across racial and ethnic lines, black and Latino people are far more likely to be criminalized than white people. Walmsley R. 2017. Private prisons are a setback to human services. They represent the parts of our society that are inhumane and unjust. Prisoners are in prison to rehabilitate and not to offer free labor. With no end. These people are part of a forgotten population seen as undesirables. A private prison or for-profit prison is a place in which individuals are physically confined or incarcerated by a third party that is contracted by a government agency. This paper will give an overview of the trend toward privatizing prisons. With the new administration under Trump, there is a push to privatize more prisons. This paper will discuss the history of prisons. Prisons have racial and social economic disparities that make imprisonment the new form of slavery. Privatizing prisons will exacerbate this problem as well as others without accountability to anyone. The use of prison for a profit business is against human rights and decency. We should care because the benefits do not outweigh the social costs. Private prisons become a trend. The policy of privatizing prisons is not a new concept. According to the U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics, the number of inmates held in private prison facilities increased from approximately 7,500 in 1990 to almost 129,000 in 2012. This quiet trend is, however, being visited under our new presidential administration with renewed fervor. As of November 9, 2017, the day after Mr. Trump was elected president, the stocks of correctional conglomerates were among the best performing on the New York Stock Exchange. This demonstrates the expectation that there will be amplified push and an interest in prison privatization. Trump is known for being a businessman, and this is big business at its finest. With prisons, I think we can do a lot of privatizations, Mr. Trump said during 2017 campaign, campaign trail. According to Hallett, political agendas are driven by corporate interests. All of these factors combine to create a powerful reemergence of privatization and independent contracting. History. Prisons were formed as a deterrent to criminal action and to reform the criminal from negative behavior. During the formation of this country, England sent criminals to the Americas as punishment. During and after the Revolutionary War, this practice evolved to rid the community of undesirables. The history of prisons is steeped with inequality towards minorities, the poor, and those with lower educational backgrounds. Private prisons saw a growth in inmates 
after the Civil War and with the 13th Amendment. The history of private prison in general is steeped with racial disparity and inequality, which is evident in the trend of convict leasing. Convict leasing, which originated in Mississippi, ensured that a generation of black prisoners would suffer and die under worse conditions than they had ever experienced as slaves. Once slavery was abolished, the oppressor just found ways to make money by sending convicts to work in the South, starting with Mississippi. Once the need for more laborers slash slaves were needed, a new supply had to be found. A steady stream of convicts was supplied when and where they were needed by simply arresting blacks on petty charges such as vagrancy, gambling, disorderly conduct, assault, etc. The next big wave of inmates was due to the war on drugs. The 1970s initialization of the war on drugs has led to the 500% increase of the United States prison population in just over the last 40 years. At present, the United States prison systems, federal and state, hold about 2.2 million of the nation's population, providing numerous industries with cheap and unlimited labor at the expense of human lives. Problems with private prisons. One problem with private prisons are they are not held to standards of safety. The idea of money first, safety second is rampant in private prisons. The prisons are increasing the prisoners to guard ratio, adding to an already unsafe environment. In an already stressful environment, this can cause physical and mental strain. Guards are being asked to do more work for less pay at private prisons. This extra work, combined with a lack of training, can result in unfair treatment of inmates. This also can account for the higher rate of guard suicide in private prisons than in government-run facilities. It is known that correctional officers experience constant stress because of fear of inmate attacks, mandatory overtime, rotating shifts, sleep disturbances, and supervisory demands. Job stress issues are linked to psychological disorders that may result in an elevated suicide risk. Prison privatization is not in the interest of helping humanity, but will help companies to make money. Prisoners in these institutions are not rehabilitated, but come out worse than when they go in. We need to keep private prisons accountable for human rights and keep them from becoming a way to traffic human labor. Inmates are seen as monetary commodity instead of as a human. As products, inmates can basically be sold to the highest bidder in the slave trade. This is done by companies being able to outsource to private prisons. Whichever company can pay the most money gets the prison labor. There are no regulations on what type of work inmates are doing or how long inmates are working. This leaves room for a slave mentality to meet quotas and time crunches. The needs of the inmates are second to the amount of money that the inmate can bring in. Private prisons extort their prisoners for basic services that can result in debt for families and prisoners. The price hike on making phone calls and buying necessary items is appalling. Prisoners have to buy items like soap and any items that help to keep them out of trouble. Violence against inmates from their peers is about 65% higher in private prisons than not-for-profit prisons. Privately operated prisons have systemic problems in maintaining secure facilities. These prisons have more escape 
homicides, assault, and drug abuse compared to government-run prisons. According to Ramirez, private prisons are overcrowded. There is an ever-increasing population of terminally ill inmates. Also, with such close quarters and confinement, the rates of communicable diseases are already higher in the prison system. Without proper ventilation, these diseases are rampant in private prisons. When you are for profit, you are not held to the same basic need standards. If the private prison determines you do not need medication, there is no one to refute those claims. Prisons are already overpopulated with people who have done their time or were charged unfairly. Private prisons are based profiting from racial disparity. Consider some statistics about racial, social, economic, and religious disparity in the prison system. The statistics start with the disparity in who gets sentenced. Black males are more likely to be sentenced for a crime with longer prison time across types of offenses. From sentencing to the amount of time received for the same crime, people receive harsher sentences based on race. The prison system undoubtedly needs reform, but how will privatization affect human rights? Negatively, if you look at trends and information. Why we should care. Prisons are supposed to be a deterrent and a means to change negative behavior. When prisons become a means to fill out work orders, we take away from the integrity of its purpose. Private prisons can sway sentencing with judges to make sure the prison is full. The prison can also charge inmates once inside to make the sentence even longer. These prisoners can be a loved one or neighbor. They can be anyone. We should care because prison is supposed to rehabilitate people, not benefit from suffering. Conclusion. To conclude, we are doing a huge disservice to our people by incarcerating them for profit. There are no regulations to private-run prisons. They are basically supplying bodies on demand for work. This raises ethical and fair treatment questions about policy and procedure in obtaining prisoners. In an already race discriminatory system, a private prison can be an extended stay back to slavery. As a human service advocate, this issue is pressing to my career. We need to care for all people, and that includes our prisoners. Save lives and keep people from new era slavery.